Now we want to say it's Friday again. You know what I'm saying? Thank the Lord for allowing us to see another day. You know what I'm saying? Because now we got to take it one day at a time. You know what I'm saying? Because God said, why worry about tomorrow? Tomorrow going to take care of itself. Okay? So we want to thank the Lord for that. We want to, uh, we had uh, Victory in Jesus, Holy Bible Study Center, 1375 East Lucas. You understand? We are the minister, Herman Young. You understand? We want to, today we want to pray for uh, Brother Charles Barlow, Brother Mike Barlow. We want to pray for Brother John. You know what I'm Give him traveling grace that he make it. Sister Melanie and her husband. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Jonah, you know, we want to say uh, thanks to them too. You know what I'm saying? They members here. I want to say Sister Ken and her family, Sister Keep Me Aware, uh, Pastor God, I'm mean, Pastor God, they minister God. Uh, today is their uh, uh, wedding anniversary. Amen. want to thank the Lord for that, and we hope that tomorrow when they open up their eyes, they start a new one. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't want to look through the whole year, you want to just look to tomorrow, you know. Because God said tomorrow going to take care of itself. Yes, so I'd rather let God take care of my tomorrow, because sometimes I have a tendency, I might mess it up. <laughs> so I thank the Lord. That he said tomorrow will take care of himself. So you know Jesus Christ got something to do with that. I want to thank the Lord for our pastor and his wife. I want yes, to thank uh, my family, my, my wife, uh, Karen, and uh, my son, Angel, and all my, my, my immediate family. I want to thank the Lord for them, you understand? Yes, because they, I put them through a lot. And I thank the Lord that they're still here for me, you know? I really, truly, I thank the Lord. You know, there's only one thing that I regret, you know what I'm saying, is that, is that I didn't do this sooner. You know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, on this side of the fence, you know, God said you can't even straddle it. That's but that's right. what I'm saying. On this side, on Jesus Christ's side, yes, sir. you understand? This is a better thing that I'm doing. And I wish I would have chose that side a long time ago. You know what I'm saying? Because, uh, you know, the way the deal operates is that God is good, you know, and he fixes it. Yes, sir. He fixes it for you. Because he said, anything you ask in my name, you understand? Father will give it to you. You know what I'm saying? So we thank you for that, Lord God. We thank you. We want to thank you for those that are, are coming and those that are here. And we want to ask you to encamp the angels around them, Lord. Yeah, you yes. know, and uh, keep them in your tabernacle, hide them in your provision, Lord God. That they stay safe from any hurt harm and day. Today is a good day. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Because God said, you know, uh, whenever you open up your eyes and you pray to God and you thank the Lord, you understand that he allowed you to put on the full arm of God. You got to say thank you, Lord, man. That day thank was a you, beautiful Lord. day. You know what I'm saying? That when you open up your eyes, you got to remember it's up to you what happened. So you got to go with Jesus. You got to put Jesus in front of you. Amen. That way he can mess around and keep that devil from, from hitting your head on. You know, sometimes that's what he do. He'll come on around you, but see, with Jesus in the front of you, you got the whole, that, that 360 degree perimeter of love around you so the devil can't, you know, interfere with what's going Amen. on when you. When you got something going on with God, you understand? So we want to thank the Lord. We want to want to uh, pray right now. We want to. Uh, I want to. I want to thank the Lord for uh, Miss Wendy LeBlanc, uh, Pastor Rick Ernest. We want to thank him for uh, Pastor uh, 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 Brad Bailey. Yes. I want to thank him for him, you know, and his wife. And I also want to thank Mr. Ed and Miss Cora once again because I can That's no way I can ever get to my, my mind. You know what I'm saying? So I thank the Lord for them too. But dearly. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you right now yeah, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. We ask you that, that I decrease, that you increase in me, Lord yeah, God. Absolutely. For you are the great I am, Lord God. I thank you, I marvel and I glorify, Lord God. I thank you for all the strength that you've given me, Lord, the understanding yeah. and knowledge, the wisdom that I'm receiving now, Lord, is overwhelming, Lord. Yeah. I want to thank you and I want to ask you, Lord God, to open up the minds and understanding of the people, Lord God, that they, that they come and they realize, God, that what happened back in the Old Testament has already been settled, but it, that don't mean it's not still happening. It's still happening in a different shape and form, Lord God. It's coming at you in a different reality, Lord God. You know, the devil, he's cunning, you know, as a serpent, you understand? And quickly, so, so you got to understand that everything that you do, any good that you do, the devil going to always be there to try to cause confusion. But if you put Jesus first, yeah, keep Jesus in your life, you understand? You keep on praying to Jesus. 
and you must run and you worship and understand what he said, because today is another day that the Lord has made. I will be glad and rejoice. I pray, Lord God, I yes, thank Lord. you, I marvel and I glorify you. I say hallelujah, Lord. I pray for Israel, Lord God, for you say he that pray for Israel, you understand you're going to bless Israel, you're going to bless them also, Lord. Yes. So, Lord, I'm standing in line for my blessing, Lord God. I ask you right now to, to stop all the fight and all the chaos and confusion yes. that's going on in Israel. I know that the devil has his hand in that because he don't want your people to rise up, Lord God. For he don't want to let them know how wonderful you are, Lord God. So I thank you and I marvel and I glorify you. I ask you to look upon the presidential race, Lord God. You know that's something that we're going to mess around and have to have you in, Lord God. Because the Antichrist is strong. He's waiting to see where he can stick his head in, Lord God. For the devil is like a roaring lion who can save everybody. We don't want to give him no credit where he's doing, Lord God. We want to strip him of everything that belongs to you, Lord God. Because there's nothing in this world that don't belong to you, Lord God. So we strip that devil, Lord right God, now. of all that dis disobedience, you understand? Sinning, misunderstanding, backbiting, and everything else, or covetousness, Lord God, murder, envy, strife, Lord God. We ask you that we strip him of all these things, Lord God, and that we replace it with love and joy and hope and happiness, Lord God, the things that you wish for us to have, Lord God. I thank you for looking thank after you. me, Lord God. I thank you for looking after the people. So we want to just encourage the world, Lord God, that they just look toward the hill from which coming their hill. Yes, Lord. You understand? So we pray and we ask you right now in Jesus' name, our Father who art in heaven, O be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen, Lord God. We thank you, and we thank you, Lord God. We like to ask, you know, certain questions, you know what I'm saying? Uh, how you feel today? You know what I'm saying? If, you know, the devil had anything to do with what's going on in your life today, I want to ask you right now to just cast him down, Lord God. Amen. I want you to make him understand that he has no place. That you are the great I am, Lord God. Yes, Lord. From the beginning to the end, Lord God. Yes, Lord. We thank you. We marvel and we glorify you. you. Today, we're going to go back to where we was last week. You understand? Because this buffet right here is already laid out. Because uh, me and Pastor was talking uh, when we were sitting there earlier. And, uh, you know, I think we, see, God said, well, two or more gathered agreeing. See, that's, that's the thing. So me and Pastor was agreeing that we want to say that the word of God is powerful. Amen. This is, uh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is, uh, uh, uh. Part three, the word is power. Yes, sir. There's power in the world. Amen. So, and we came to the conclusion that it don't make no difference what part of this book you open up is all God's word. So that's, that means that see this, see this power. Yes, sir. <coughs> and we want to thank the Lord for his power. You understand? We're going to go to, we're going to open up today. See, God is good, man. I mean, I couldn't wait to get here, man. You know, I, like I say, you know, you got to live each day one, one at a time. Because if you try to get ahead of yourself, you always end up in trouble. No matter what we try to do. The Lord already worked it out if we slow down. Amen. Sometimes we put ourselves, our worst enemy is, is ourselves. We put ourselves into a position to well. We can't even see what's going on in front of us because we're too worried about what happened behind us. You know, so God say, get thee behind me, Satan. You understand? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you right now that I'm, God is, he's an awesome God. Yes, he is. I wouldn't trade this for the world, man. No, not you know, I sit back and I think about it, man. I'm telling you, man, I, I, it just blows me away, man. The things that are going on in my life right now. The great and we want to go to, uh, we're going to open up our open scripture today. We're going to open up with the book of Zechariah. Amen. We're going to open up, it's 11, page 11, 17. Page 11, 17. You know, he was another prophet of the Lord. Yes, sir. See? And he had a task. See, when God tell you to do something, you just don't know the blessings and the things that'll come to you when you do what God tell you to do. Amen, brother. See, when God tell you to do something, you ain't got to 
worry about where the tools are or what time you got to get there. You're going to make sure it, it's going to be right on time. Exactly. And what you need is going to already be there. That's so right. Just like me and Pastor said, it don't make no different way you open it at. This word is power. Amen. That's power in the word. <laughs> this is part three. There's power in the word. I want to tell you a little bit about Zechariah. See, Zechariah was another prophet. He was tripping the Israel that came out of bondage, you know, in Babylon, or you know. See, first the Sir Syrians had them in bondage. Then they got out and they started being disobedient. And uh, Nebuchadnezzar of uh, Babylon, the king of Babylon, he uh, enslaved them a little bit more. But at this point in time right here, you know, say, it says, uh, uh, they had been building on the temple for about 12 years. But they wasn't, they wasn't halfway, was halfway through with it. But they wasn't really working on it the way they were supposed to. So God told Dr. Rock, go down there and encourage them. That's right. Go and encourage them that they finish the house of the Lord. You understand that thing? So sometime that goes to show you, we need some encouragement. Amen. Brother. You know what I'm saying? So I want to come today. I want to encourage you that you study the word of God because yes, there's, yeah. there's power in the word. Amen, brother. You understand? And I thank the Lord that, that you know, that Zachariah was a man that when God told him to go do it, he went and done it. You know that? He didn't have to take it. Yes, sir. He went and done exactly what God, and that's the way I am right now. That's why it don't matter. I, if God say, if God put it on my heart to do it, I'm going to do it. Amen. You understand? Because I know I ain't gonna, it ain't going to be nothing wrong. He's not going to send me out there to do anything wrong. Yes, that's what's so cold about it. God never sends you anywhere to do anything that's contrary to the word of God. Amen. Him, so we want to read what we want to read is we want to read uh we're gonna start with uh verse two to six. Alright. Okay. We're gonna start with verse one. In the eighth month, in the second year of uh, Darius came the word of the Lord. See? Yeah, it does. That go to the word of the Lord. Yes, sir. That's something. The word unto Zechariah, the son of Berechel, Berechel, the son of Adu. I looked at him. The prophet saying, I do the prophet saying, the Lord has been sore. The Lord had the Lord had been sore displeased with your father. Therefore, say thou unto them, This said, thus said it the Lord of the host. Turn ye unto me, said it the Lord of hosts, and I will turn unto you, said it the Lord of hosts. See, and that's what he said. See, back then, God was just the same thing. You could apply this right here to your life. That's it. You know what I'm saying? God said, if you turn to him, he'll turn to you. You see, man, that still works right now today. That still yes, works. That's what I love about it. You see, when I read that, he grabbed a hold to me and I said, thank you, Lord. Amen. You understand? That's what I'm trying to tell you. God said, see, it has, it has a lot to do with what's going on right now. That You see, sometimes we, we get halfway through with something and we slow, slow down. Yeah. When God, when we know for a fact that God got something else for us to do when we get through, but we slow down and we don't want to continue. But see, sometimes God is sending people to you to encourage you Amen. to go on and finish what you got to, what, what you got to finish what you started. Yes, sir. In other words. Because yes, yes, if you never finish anything, you'll never accomplish nothing. You see what I'm saying? So that's what I'm trying to tell you. So this is why God told Zechariah to go talk to him. Because, see, they was lagging around. They had been working on the temple for 12 years. So they wasn't even halfway through. So, you know, God told him, if you if he said, I will turn unto you, said the Lord of hosts. It says, be ye not as your fathers unto whom the, form, the former prophets have cried, saying, thus said it, the Lord of hosts. Turn ye now from your evil ways and from your evil doings. But, but they did not hear nor happen unto me, said the Lord. You see? Yes, sir. So we're talking right now, we're talking about what, what the word of God tells him. The word of God came to him and told him to stop the Lord, stop, stop their evil ways, stop doing what they was doing wrong. You see what I'm saying? But they didn't want to listen, you understand? But, but we're talking about when the older prophet, God said when yes, older sir. prophets came to him and told him this, that they didn't want to hear. So now Zechariah is here telling them again, don't be like your fathers. 
Don't be like your father. Don't don't listen to what your father did the way your father. They didn't want to hear anything. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so I just, uh, he like said, that. that's right. Don't be like them, Pastor. He no, said, your fathers were, where are, where are they? And the prophets, do they live forever? No, they don't. See, Jesus Christ lived forever. This is what he was trying to say. This is the word of God, what the word of God was trying to tell him back then. Amen. That see, the prophets ain't going to live forever. Your fathers ain't going to live forever. But this word going to live forever. Yes, sir. Jesus Christ going to be here forever, man. It ain't, he's not going nowhere. You understand? Even after eternal life, you still going to be with Jesus. I'm going to go be with Jesus, man. Amen. Because I already know what my daddy had. You understand? All right. It says, uh, but, but my words and my statute also which I commanded my servants, the prophets, did they not take hold of your fathers? And they returned and said, like as the Lord of hosts, oh, no, no, thank you, Lord, thoughts to do unto us according to our way. You see what I'm saying? Okay. And, and according to our doing, so had he dealt with us. And see, and that's the same thing like today. Yes, sir. See, see, that's the same thing. Just like this word right here with Zechariah was trying to tell him. If you start something, get that way and don't want to finish, you'll never accomplish what you need to do. Exactly. See, there's one thing that I know for a fact that I'm not going to, uh, uh, the word of God will always be here. Yes, sir. So, therefore, this is something that I will work on daily. Yes, you understand? Yes, I won't do this day after tomorrow, the day Friday, next Friday. No, this is a daily walk with the Lord. Yes, and this is what we were trying to tell them that if you won't be, if you won't listen to me, listen to me, because if you don't, what he said right here in verse in verse six, what did he say right here at the end? He said, that do that 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 though to do unto us according to our way. All See, right. they even asking the Lord, treat me the way I, I, you feel as if it should be I, I, it, it should be accordingly. You understand? Yes, sir. If I'm out there sinning, then I'm going to mess with and I'm going to end up in hell. If I'm out there serving the Lord, then I'm going to end up in hell. So that's just, this is what he's trying to say right here. If I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do, you understand? How y'all doing today? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Did you enjoy your trip? Your birthday? Yeah. Amen. We thank you. See y'all. Everything is lovely, yeah? Amen. I see. Well, we want to thank the Lord for that, too. You understand? We hope y'all have many more. You understand what I'm saying? We're glad to see you again in the house of the Lord. You understand? Well, we in the, we, right now, we're in the book of Zechariah. That's 11, 17. We're the first verse to 7. We're going to read. Uh, what I want to do now, I want to read. Uh, we're in the sixth verse. You understand? So all, what I was trying to explain was this here, is that Zechariah was a prophet that God had sent. Yes, sir. And God told him to go down there and let them know that, you know, you know that, that they, had, they had been working on, on his temple for where he was going to dwell for 12 years, but they wasn't doing what they were supposed to. So he sent the prophet to let them know that they need to do what they needed to do. Because like you say, if you start something and get halfway, get get halfway uh, down the road and then you don't finish, that means, like God said, you shouldn't even start it because now you can't accomplish anything. You'll never, if you always do something halfway, then you'll never accomplish anything. Amen. And this is what the children of Israel was doing. You know, they had already been in slavery, you understand, and then now they're over here being lazy. You see what I'm saying? Ain't you preached on that too? I'm about, about jobs, I'm about. Yes, sir. Being lazy, you know what I'm saying? You shouldn't be lazy when the Lord give you something to do. I mean, you see, like your, or like the job you go to every day. When the Lord give you that job, you should be thankful no matter what you're doing. You yes, know what I'm Be thankful for that job because guess what? When people on that job see that you really truly doing what's supposed to be done, they gonna mess around and understand. Hey, that man right there need to be here. But then they look at somebody always late. Always halfway doing something that they want. They ain't gonna want to fool with. Them. So if you're a child of God, God, He take this this example right here from what Zechariah is telling the children of Israel. Don't be lazy. Amen. If you work for the God, if you work for God, you are a reflection of Jesus Christ. You understand yes, what I'm saying? So therefore, always walk boldly. That's what God wants you to do. If they say go in there and, and uh, pick that million dollars up or go over there and wipe that toilet, it don't make no difference. Amen. Go do what you need to do. You understand what I'm saying? We talking about there's power in the word. You understand what you got? Uh, uh, the first chapter, verse six. But we we, we not read. I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read that, that last of that. I'm gonna read that sixth verse one more time. 
All right, honey. It says, this is this is uh, Zechariah, God talking to Zechariah. It said, but my word and my statute, which I commanded my servants, the prophets, did they not take take hold on your fathers? And they returned and said, like, as the Lord of hosts thought to do unto us according to the way our ways, according thoughts to do unto us according to our ways and according to our doing. So had he dealt with us. And that's what it was talking about. See, it's talking about when, when you mess around, when things happen, when things happen in the world, you understand what I'm saying? You yourself, man, if, if you out there doing something that you ain't got nothing to be, ex expect something to happen to you. Expect that's that right. the police gonna, in the wrong you know, place. That's right. If you're in the wrong place at the wrong time doing the wrong thing, something ain't nothing good going to come out of it. You see what I'm saying? That ain't how you do it. So if you living for God, do what God wants you to do, say what God wants you to say, be what God wants you to be, then all the good things are going to come out. Because they'll do. See, the devil will always try to throw a twist in it. You understand? But you stay rooted in the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Yes, you want to thank the Lord for Zachariah. You understand Amen. what I'm saying? Because, I mean, I, 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 I'm going I'm, to I'm finish this book. You understand? That's why I was here. And that's why I stopped that today. But, you know, we want to talk about there's power in the word. So we're going to move on. I just want to give you some scripture to show you, you know, how, you know, the Lord used this word because me and Pastor came to the conclusion. See, from front to back, there's power. Amen. I say there's power in the word. See what I'm saying? You pick this up and open up, do it. It don't make no difference what chapter, what scripture, what page. It's power. Yes, sir. You understand? Like Pastor say, he said, Mommy, you'll never get through with that. And I thought about it. Say, yeah, you sure right. I put the whole book is power. The whole book. So just like I said, if the whole book is power, then that's what we want to talk. You want some power? Grab a hold to the, 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 the book of, 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 of Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. It don't matter. Yes, Genesis, the Deuteronomy, it don't make Isaiah, it don't make no difference what book you grab a hold to. There's power in That's this power word. In There's power in this word. Amen. You understand? So I'm gonna mess around. So look, I'm gonna go to Psalms. Go to page 764. We're gonna go to Psalms 119. Pastor, this ain't gonna be something that's gonna be familiar to you, Pastor, because I. I was looking at you online, you know, Sunday I don't have a way to get to church. So I was looking at the fact online and I was I was saying to myself, man, boy, it's, it's a powerful word right there. Amen. You understand? It's a powerful word. You know what I'm saying? Pastor was talking. He, he spoke on it. But then I met him and I said, uh, I'm, I was reading my studies and I was going back and forth. And it led me to uh, Psalms 119. Right? Praise That's the Lord. Lord. You know what I'm saying? The power in the word. Amen. It's power in the word. It led me right to Psalms 119, ain't that something? So we want to mess around and read a couple of scriptures out of here because I want to show you. See, David wrote this here. You see what I'm saying? I got to tell you, I'm going to be, I wouldn't mind being a man like David, you know what I'm saying? But I'm glad I'm who I am, you understand, because I ain't going to never stop. But we're going to read today, you know, uh, we're going to read out of Psalms 119. We're going to go to verse, let's go to verse 9. Let's go to verse 9 through 12. All right? See, this is the Lord talking to David, talking to the Lord. He said, Wherewith shall a young man cleanse his ways? Where can a young man go to cleanse his ways? <laughs> go to church. Go to the house of the Lord. You want to cleanse the ways because yes, this is who the devil is after. He's after our young children. He's after the young man. He's after the young woman. You understand? Because now here it is. I done lived my life, my youth. And then now here it is. I'm saying to myself, I wish I would have done it back then. But now you're that because people say, oh, you're just saying that because where you at now. And you show sure all right. You know that? But I'm telling you, if you stop what you're doing right now, young man, and turn to the house of the Lord, Amen. you understand? And go in there and get this word, which is powerful. Yes, I'm telling you, that'll yes, make you understand. You'll enjoy your life. Because not only will you start feeding your spirit, you'll start feeding your flesh the right thing. Don't you know, because you, the Bible said that the, uh, the spirit don't want to dwell in an unclean gym. It don't have nothing to do with food. It could be uh, uh it could be the way you carry your life. You could be a liar. You could be a fornicator. Yes, you could be a thief. You see what I'm saying? It's what God talking about. He ain't just talking about because you out there... Uh, 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 sinning, that's exactly what he's talking about. When you're young, if you mess around and get it in your head, that I'm not going to sin no more. 
You ask the Lord, say, Lord, what is sin, Lord God? Anything that's contrary to the word of God, that's sin. Amen. You understand? Anything that tries to bring this down is a sin. You understand what I'm saying? Anything that you do against Jesus is a sin. You see what I'm saying? So we're going to read a little bit here right here on page 19. You know what I'm saying? It says, uh, you see, see, because we got to understand that the young people is really one. I didn't know that, but I'm here to give you that to you now. Amen. I hope my children understand it. By taking heed there to according to thy word. You see what I'm saying? If you take heed to the word of God, man, oh, it yes, says God. this here, yes, it God. says, okay, we're going to read it to the Lord and say, with my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not uh, wither from thy commandment. You understand? Lord, I thank you, Lord God. I thank you. I glorify you, Lord God. Amen. Oh, Lord, thank you, Lord. I wish I would have had this word, man. I wish I would have listened to you, Lord. I wish I would have listened to my mama, Lord. Yeah, sure. I wish I would have listened to all the people that tried to steer me in this direction. When I was young, Lord God, I ask you to forgive me, Father. Forgive me for I sinned against you, Lord. And only you have I sinned against, Lord God. I ask you to forgive me, Father. Yeah. Oh, Lord, this is... Lord, I, you know, I just, I just, I'm just glad, Lord God, that I sit back and, you know, there's a lot of people that say, oh, it's hard. They say that this word is hard, Lord God. It's hard to live according to what you want them to do, Jesus Christ. But now I find out that it's not, Lord, and that's what makes me so, you know, angry at myself, Lord God, that I figure out that it's not that hard. It wasn't that hard. It really ain't hard to do this, what God wants you to do, man. Change your life, man. Stop doing what you're doing, man. Turn around, man. God say, man, look here, man, I'm trying to tell you, man. <laughs> it's a lot of things that I started that I didn't finish. Maybe that's why Zachariah spoke to me so loud. You know what I'm saying? Because <coughs> what I did, man, I started a lot of things. Relationships, friendships, you understand, tasks. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of things that I started that I didn't finish Amen. that I left lingering out there. But when I had my youth, I had my strength and my mind and everything and I could have did what I, the Lord wanted me to do, but I choose not to. So I'm asking you now, man, turn away from what you're doing. Yeah, Repent, yeah. man. Yes, Repent. You understand? Oh, man, I wandered away from the word of God. I, I, didn't, I didn't do the commandments, Lord God. And now I am. To say thy word, verse 11 says, thy word have I hid in my heart. That's what I did. Yes, sir. I must have hid the word of God in my heart because I had been hearing it because my mama was telling me she would send me to church. I would walk to church but then be able to go to the park. You know what I'm saying? When I got old enough to be to think I was I was being slick. See, it's a certain age that our children come up like God say, if you don't bring them up in your way, See, they're going to turn away from it, but if you bring them up in the way of the Lord, you understand what I'm saying? They're going to always try to cling to the Lord. They're going to know what's going on in their life, why they so much trouble, so much, why the storms are raging in their lives, and That's why right. they can't accomplish anything. Because if you bring them up in the Word of God, they're already going to know it because the devil is, 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 is on their back. He's going to make sure he's leaning on top of you to make sure he only could steer you away to steer you wrong. That's what he's doing. And he's still been wrong so many times. And that's why I make it so sweet now when I defeat him. Yes, sir. When, you know, I'm going to tell you just like I was telling Pastor. I looked up today. When I looked up, my wife was standing in the door, right? But she was just standing like right in the middle. And she looked in the room and she eased over there where my bed and she looked. And then I happened to look up from my bottle and say, what's wrong? She said nothing. But you know what I thought? She looked at me and, and answered the same thing. I said, what's wrong? She said, no. She said, you all right? I'm like, yeah, I'm all right. But it was, to me in my heart when she left, the only thing I said, I said to myself, I said, man, she was so used to me not being here. She couldn't believe that I was there. I don't go nowhere. I don't, I don't do it. And then knows this wheelchair, boy, you know what I'm telling you, I can, boy, they, boy, they, boy, you have to take the wheels off of it in confusion. I was called. That's the only way I wouldn't get nowhere. You'd have to figure out, don't put no power in it because the devil's so powerful, he don't make you find a way. You understand? You won't make you you become a, a what they say, I be a, become a chief sinner. Oh, I be the chief. Yes, sir. You understand? You can't tell. I'm gonna figure it out. You got to take the wheels off today. But my wife looked up in there and when she saw me, she said, Oh, ain't nothing wrong. 
But to me, I thought in my head, man, ain't that something? You know, that was nothing to tell you. So she, you know, I thank the Lord for it, man. She probably couldn't believe I was in there. You understand what I'm saying? I don't know what she was thinking, but I know something was on her mind because she was standing there peeking around the corner. I'm like, what you looking at? Like, but then she came to tell you, you know what? I love you. I said, man, I love you too, man. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for it, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. To say thy word have I hid, verse 11. Say thy word have I hid in, the, in my heart. That that I might not sin against thee. Yes, yes Lord. Lord. I don't want to sin against you, Lord. Lord. It said in verse 12, said, Blessed art thou, O Lord. Teach me thy statue. Yes, you Lord. see what I'm saying? Me, and this is what I try to tell you. This right here, as long as you keep your head stuck up in this hill, man, you won't. It, it can take you to the highest heights and the deepest depth. You yes, understand sir. what I'm trying to tell you? This word right here, man, people right now still trying to figure out some of the things that's going on. Uh, how did. Did this tribe do this? And how did they build this? And where did it? Man, I'm trying to tell them it came from the Lord. Amen, brother. Why don't you start looking in that direction instead of trying to figure out where uh, 2,000 billion years ago? But you ain't you know, you can never. But God give you the knowledge. Amen. You see but he's giving you the knowledge and hoping that you turn to him. Yes, sir. Turn to the Lord, man. You want to know something, turn to the Lord. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, Go in this word here, you'll figure it out. Read some scrolls and stuff. You'll figure out what God is trying to tell you. But you don't want to go to, uh, let me tell you something. Let's go to verse 17. Still right there in our 19. I want to go to 17. Let's go, let's go to verse 17. Uh, uh, Psalms 19, that's page uh, 765, which is over. It says, Dear bondfully with thy servant. That's me. That's that. See, I always put yourself in that position. Don't worry about somebody else. You understand what I'm saying? But if you see your brother out there and he's about to fall, then you, then you mess around and let him understand, hey, amen. Okay, you gotta ask the Lord to think powerfully with you, man. You about to run and fall in that ditch yes, over sir. there. Don't you know what you're doing? You're on the wrong track, bro. You finna run ahead and right ahead and head into the track what 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 Jeff is on. And this is what the devil do. He'll take two of us and put us on the same track and butt our head together and we don't even realize. I'm not mad at you. You understand what I'm saying? You ain't even got to be mad at me because whatever it is, it's foolish. You see what I'm saying? So that's what I'm trying to tell you. The devil came to kill, steal, and destroy. You understand? Now I'm going to tell you right here, verse 7. Say, Dear bountifully with, with thy servant, that I may live and keep thy word. You see what I'm saying? So if you do that, then you ain't got to worry about running into no confusion. Because you know why you in this word? The word is power. Yes, sir. You understand? And let me tell you something. I may look at excuse me, no, I got to give me, man. I'll tell you what his word is, boy, it takes me fit to shower sometimes. Maybe sometimes you come up in there and be one that you might hear me. You know, I think about some of the things I did, I think back, and it make me feel so depressing, you know. But then I realize, all right, devil, get up off me. You see what I'm saying? Just make come up and get up off me with that. That's, that's, that's over there in the sea of forgetting Now, how did I, how did I go over there and get it? What I, think, what I went over there and got it, the Lord didn't bring it to me. God said he would take your thoughts and the things that you do, and he would take your sins and he'll throw it in the sea of forgiveness. That's so you right. got to remember one thing. Anytime that something comes to your mind that tries to make you understand that, oh man, you were wrong. You shouldn't have did this. Man, you know, man, you got to understand that's the word from the devil, man. Because the Lord said that the word is powerful. Yes, and sir. he would take it and he would throw it in the sea of forgiveness. Right. So therefore, he would never bring it back up to your remembrance. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So you know that that's what the devil is trying to do. So sometimes you know you you find yourself getting caught deep in thought, and it's not positive if it's not this word. Amen. You got to understand. You got to ask the Lord, look here, Lord. I want you to deal bountifully with me, Lord, because forgive me. I done did it again, Lord. I took my eye off of you. Oh. The same thing Peter did. You know what I mean? Don't take your eye off the Lord. Amen. Always remember, man, just somebody that's somebody you now you can fight the devil with. See, I used to sit there with those thoughts and just, just let them roll through my mind. This thing so crazy, man. Next thing I know, I'm gone out there to try to get do something. Whatever Jeff did, I'm finna try to find it, hit him in the back of his head. You understand what I'm saying? Because it's a reason why it's on my mind. And see, that's what the devil wants you to yes, do. Sir. So you got to mess around now. I don't have to think about those it's things. Bad, and those things come to mind, and I think about, oh, man, come on. Man. <laughs> Boy, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Yes, sir. Back up off me, devil. You understand? That's power in the word, Amen, man. Brother. That's power in the word. That's power in the name. That's power in the blood. You understand? You got power, though. I mean, you, oh, you can hit it any kind of way you want. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? 
There's power. Man, look. There's power in the resurrection. There's yeah. power in the baptism. You understand? There's power in repentance. There's Amen. power in the word. There's power in the blood, man. You understand? You, there's so many ways that you can fight against the devil, but the main thing is to put the words. <laughs> I'm going to show you some of this. Let's look at Let's go to Matthew, page 1140, fifth chapter of Matthew. So another one I want to tell you about. It's this power in the word, man. Yes, sir. I'm just telling you, man, I just sat down and I went to read these things, and I went to understand it. And I was saying to myself, wow, Lord. These are just a few things. I'm just giving you. It really truly, you know, see, God says study to show yourself approved. Yes, sir. See, I'm like right now, you know, this is what Bible study is. I'm just sharing some of the things that I read, some of the things that God has revealed to me. You understand? I want to tell you that's what's so good about Bible study because you can get, especially when you got so many different people doing so many different things. And therefore, as long as it's the word of God, you can touch Jesus on so many bases. You understand what I'm saying? You just keep that way the word coming, always coming from all shape. You can see the word, you can hear the word, yes, smell the word, feel the word, touch the man. People are gonna mess around and do wonderful and miraculous things for the Lord for you, man. That's what God said. God has always used man to do his bid. You understand what I'm saying? So that's why Zachariah was one of those people. I mean, that's a beautiful book, man. If you keep on reading, you'll find out that the children of Israel, God eventually forgave them and they eventually finished that temple too. They'll finish eventually finished. We want to go uh, Matthew, the fifth chapter, verse 43. Uh, we'll read verse 43. It says, Ye yeah, have heard, this is Jesus speaking. This is Jesus speaking. Yes, okay. Ye have heard that it had been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what it's saying? It says you shall love thy neighbor. Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. That's you know, that's that's ain't that something? Ain't that something? That they, did you hear what he just said? Well, let me, get, let me show you something. But this is how wonderful, this is how, this how we should think. Remember when, when I said, Pastor? I say our thoughts are not his thoughts and our ways are not his ways. But then he told me if you if you change your life and start doing it. See, this is what Jesus said right here. He said that. But what he said this for was because he wanted you to understand. Let's see how Jesus feels about it. That's what I'm saying, Pastor. Yeah. Let's do what Jesus do. Let's see what he say. You see, he said, but I say unto you. See, this is Jesus speaking. Jesus said this. But I say unto you. Just think of how many enemies Jesus had. Hey. All the Pharisees and all the Sadducees, everywhere they went for that. They was lying on him and everything. Huh, they were doing everything they could do to Jesus. So Jesus, man, he told them just like this. He said, he said, I'm going to start. I'm going to read that again because, boy, I want you to understand all of this. This is Jesus talking. He said, ye have heard that, ye have heard that it had been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. The Old Testament. That's what it says. He said, but I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Do you understand that? That's what Jesus. And you know what? This is what I was trying to tell you. It's a prime example. Because that's exactly what Jesus did. Didn't he do that? Jesus did that. Amen. He loved his enemy. He said all the people that was persecuting him. He had even in the end, guess what he said? He said, Father, forgive them. Yes, sir. Boy, see, that's what I'm trying to tell you. You can stand on the word of God. You can stand on Jesus' word. This is the word right now. My God, my God. Jesus is the word. And this is what the word said to you. The word said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. You understand what he's trying to say right here in Matthew? He's saying, I did it. So don't tell me you can't do it. You see yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. If you want to be perfect like God is perfect, you understand? Strive to be that then. Try to love your enemy. Try, try, to, try to forgive those that despitefully use you do because you know what? When you become a Christian, people think something soft about you. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm finna go ask them for this. I'm gonna ask them for that. Oh, they gonna do this. They gonna do this. yeah. I might do. I might do that. But then guess what? Who is hurting you? Doing that and trying to get over you ain't doing nothing but hurting yourself. 
You understand? Amen. Because now you just one lazy person. You understand? You think you gonna walk through the world just using God's people. You see what I'm saying? And look, they got somebody in this book right here that thought that. You understand what I'm saying? But in the end, he ended up being one of the greatest men of God. You understand? Talking about Saul. You understand? It says on 45, it says, that ye may be the children of your father, which is in heaven. For he had, for he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the on the good. Yes, sir. And and send it rain on the just and the unjust. And that's not. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same. See, and if ye and if ye, and if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so. It says, but ye therefore, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Ah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? That's, awesome. That's a powerful word. It is. It's a powerful And you know what? They like they say, lead by example, right? Amen. Jesus didn't have no problem doing that. You know what I'm saying? In the world, and there was nobody in the world, even, even those people that say that, you know, Jesus is not who he is. You know what I'm saying? You got you won't tell me that when Jesus died for your sins too. That's right. When he hung on that cross, he hung up there for them, for them too. You understand what I'm saying? He didn't care who you was. Amen. He wouldn't even care where you was or what you was doing. He met you where you're gonna meet you where you at because that's what God said. That God said when he comes, when he comes and part the eastern sky, whatever state you in, God, that's, that's the state you're gonna be in. So you ask yourself where you want to be when the Lord comes. Right, you understand? That's right. See, it's power. Jesus did exactly what he's telling you to do. If somebody told me to go and forgive my enemy, and then you ain't did. You understand? That probably would be what would come out of my mouth. How you gonna tell me to do something you ain't done? See, that's what I'm trying to tell you. You can mess my and put you can put a you can put a plumb box. This is a this is a, this is a powerful thing. Jesus messed my trying to tell you what to do because he did it. Yes, sir. He did it. Love those that despitefully use you, huh? That's what he said. Love your enemy. I you understand? <laughs> Come on, man. Guess what, though? That's the way I feel right now. I thought about it. I was out there running around with them gang. I wasn't even mad at the person. I was mad because the person wore a certain color. You see how foolish that is? Yeah. They're not thinking the way they're supposed to think. They got their mind all cluttered and called up. They don't understand that that man didn't do them nothing. Amen. The man didn't do him, forgive me. That man didn't do him nothing. But if somebody ever tell him, if you want to call that man your friend, if that man hurt your friend, God said, talk to your, to your brother and bring your brother. You talk to your brother. Bring your brother over there to that man and y'all ask that man to forgive you and that's what you do. See, but I'm telling you, I didn't have no knowledge of things like that. I'm telling you, man, if you running around with a gang, what you may have felt or realize is that the person that's standing there in front of you, you... Realize you don't even know who that is. You don't even know him. So what could he have done to you to make you feel that you want to take his life? Because he have a, a, a rag in his pocket? Because he got a shirt on a different color? Because he lived in a different neighborhood? He's struggling the same way you struggling. Yes, sir. Because the devil is involved in it. Come on out of there. God say, come from amongst them. Yes, sir. If you stay there, you will never accomplish anything. You will always be had done. You understand? You were, it ain't nothing that you're in the book of the, the children of Israel was sobbing around and stuff. God told them, go over there and build my temple. Yes, sir. You understand that they would have a reward. They had a reason to build a temple. So they was going to be blessed. They were going to get things from it. You ain't going to go and do nothing the way you ain't going to receive nothing, right? Amen. But Jesus Christ says, stop your foolishness, man. And everything that you do, you'll be able to see it. He said he's going to give you wonder and more and miraculous things, yes, man. Sir. And yes, that's sir. what's happening in my life. I don't have hatred for a color. I don't have hatred for a man. I love my, I don't even have no enemy. You understand? Because I'm not at war. The only person I'm at war with is the devil. So that's my enemy. That's God right. says, still pray for him. You understand? Man, I hope that, but it's too late, man. I don't know, but even in, in the long run, it's still up to God. But God has already wrote and predestined what is going on. All you got to do is read. You understand? 
you cannot live in this world and serve the devil. Because what he his final place is where you're going to end up at. There's no way in the world I want to do that. They say, how can a God, a loving God, a peaceful God do these things? And how could he have let this person die? How could he have let... God didn't do that. You got to understand it's either the life that the person that did the foolishness to them or what the person was living that they heard that they did to them. Because sometimes children don't have nothing to do with the things that happen to them. So you know what's wrong with them? The person that did it. God say, ask God to forgive them coming in their life. Man, because if they change their life, man, then they'll live, they'll be a better person. Man. Because then they say sometimes you don't think like that till it happens to you. Well, I ask you, Lord, please don't let that. But if it do, I'm glad that I've been reading this word. Right, and that God. God has given me something, you understand, to stand on, you understand? Because I would feel like the other person feel. I would want to hurt that person, you understand? But you know what God say? God say, pray for them. Amen. God say, look. God, but I say unto you, love the enemy. Bless them that curse you. That's people that's talking about you all the time. Do good to them that hate you. You understand? That's those rival gang members that you talk about. And pray for them which despitefully use you. You understand? That's what we call what they, some people say, that that was with the white man. But see, that's the devil that had his mind all cluttered up like that. Until he came into the reality of Jesus Christ. You understand? He fought for all freedom. And so now here, there's things got to happen in this world in order for the world to go around, but it's to keep on, for God to, 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 to keep blessing us, man. Amen. It's two things that we know for sure. One, we were born, and two, that we're going to die. But God gave you a choice yes, sir. whether you want to choose him. That's, that's, the, that's the most beautiful thing that you should understand. Even after all the power that God has, he still gives you a, a, a decision in the matter. Ain't that something? Amen. God gives you a decision in the matter, man. That's a beautiful thing. And that's what I realized, man. He wasn't making me do something. You know, I was always a rebellion, but don't tell me what I can't do because I'm going to do it anyway. Don't say I couldn't do it because I'm going to go do it and show you I did. You understand? That's a lot of time. A lot of people get in a lot of trouble because so that's what I'm trying to tell you. God say, weigh the cost. <coughs> when somebody come and tell you something that you know is wrong, weigh the cost. Amen. You know, and then you rebuke him. Not the man that's standing in front of you, but that devil that's inside him trying to talk you into doing something that you know is foolish. You know how many people in the penitentiary for life? How many people that been on death row? You know how many people going to hell? No, I don't know none of that. But God do. Amen, he knows. Don't ever think that God don't know. Yes, sir. You understand? Yes, sir. We're going to go to John. We're going to go to John, the first chapter of John. We're going to, uh, that's 1255. Let's go back over here because I want to show you something. See, I mean, this here, everybody knows this. Everybody knows John 1. You understand? Everybody know that. Everybody know John. Because I want to let you know there's power in this word. No, no, and what we finna let they looking at it today on it here they don't know because if you come talking to me that what I'm gonna let you know that there's power in this word exactly. and I'm gonna tell you where it came from it came from like the word like the word saying we'll read verse one it says in the beginning yes, you understand God. that there's nothing else you can't go no farther than that and what they try to say in history huh? how far is the beginning <laughs> now that they ain't never found out you know what I'm saying. But I keep on trying to tell you, go to the Lord. He'll tell you, this is what I used to say. There's things that I don't know. And says sometimes people come and they ask me questions. And I look at them and I say, well, if you do the right thing, when you end up in heaven, ask the Lord. He'll tell you. Because I don't know. I don't know how many billions or trillions. They come up sometimes and be a hundred thousand years. Then it's a billion years. Then it's two billion. See, I don't know. They don't even know. But they know when that rock hit. So if the rock hit, then that right there should have been the beginning, then, huh? The big bang, huh? The big bang. They know what they say, they know when that happened. They, they don't know the beginning. <laughs> That's right, so they don't know the beginning. Because that had to happen after God created the world. Yeah. See, God is so cold. You, you believe that when two rocks hit together, that this is a, this beautiful world that we stand in, 
these wonderful clothes that we wear, all the knowledge that we have, Mr. Scientist, you so smart that you can't even figure out what was. They say God, he would just exist it. Well, okay, then if you want to know anything after that, wait till you get there and ask him. But he's trying to tell you what to do right now to make this world a better place. He's trying to tell you what he wants you to do in his creation. He's trying to tell you what he wants you to do to his children and how he wants you to live and how you should think and how you should carry yourself. You understand what I'm saying? Stop worrying about what happened way back then. Let's talk about tomorrow. God said, don't even worry about that. You see what I'm trying to tell you? Yes, Mr. Scientist, don't God say, don't even worry about tomorrow. Because wow. wow. number one, you got to wake you up first. How did you get up? Let's figure out that devil. Let's figure out that Mr. Scientist. How did you wake up yesterday? What, some atoms or something bounced in your body and hit off the wall or something tickled your foot? You walk. Tell me that, Mr. Scientist. <laughs> it ain't nothing you can do until you wake up until God allows you to get up. Yes, sir. Let's figure that out. Look, you can't figure that out. Don't talk to me no more. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Me too. Man, don't you know what I mean? I used to look at young Sheldon. Why? Because he was one of the greatest minds who he saved with. But you know what? He was hilarious. They even had that young man the way he didn't even believe in God. I got you understand what I'm just saying? This, this talk system. I used to, I love this Sheldon. I used to laugh all the time. But that's what it was. It was a comic. It was a, now I look at it, I realize it. Yeah, that's a comic act that's going on. Yes, sir. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? Because they didn't know where they was either. Mm -hmm. <laughs> trying to tell you something, man. You can't tell me that when, when, when God woke up and said, he said, hold on, he said it right here. Tell me, tell me this, Mr. Sign. In the beginning was the word. Yes, sir. So we're talking about Jesus. We're, trying to, we're talking about Jesus now. In the beginning was the word. We're talking about Jesus. In the beginning was the word. Yes, I'm talking about Jesus. I want you to hear what I'm saying there, Mr. Scientist. I don't want you to get this part wrong. I stumble and bumble on a lot of words. But I want you to understand what John, the first chapter, the first verse said. It said, in the beginning, Mr. Scientist, was the word, and the word was Jesus Christ, scientist, man. Uh -huh. You understand? He said, and the word was with God. Yes, so that goes to tell you that there's somebody greater than what the flesh and flesh and man was. Because the flesh, God put his word inside flesh. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? So therefore we go to say that he is a father. Yes, Come on now, I figured that part out right there. Amen. It wasn't even hard. Two little lines, I figured out that, oh Lord, they trying to say Jesus is God. You know? Man, ain't nobody trying to tell you Jesus is God. The word right here said that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. Yes, sir. You understand? His word, wherever, wherever you go, whatever you do, his word go with. Amen. There's nothing that Jesus could do unless the Father wanted him to do it. He said it in his word. Amen. He said, there's nothing I can do without the Father. That's He's the one that sent me. I didn't do what I'm doing. That's so stop trying to get no confusion and chaos trying to make people believe. Read the word. Amen. That's Amen. power in the word. The word said those two verses that in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. That's, That's two things right there. The word can't go nowhere without God. Read the Bible, man. Read the Word. God said, I'll give it to you. It's in there. All you got to do is go find it. Amen. God, that's what I said. And now you won't know what you're talking about because you don't even know where I'm reading at. Right there, it said that. It said, look here. With God and the Word was God. You understand? Simple procedure. My Word. That's me, man. It's my Word. On my Word. So what? So you can't see the comparison. It said we were created in His image. Yes, sir. You understand? My word is for me. That's me. I'm gonna stand on my word. God stands on His word. Yes, sir. His word just have a name. God said I'm gonna give my word a name, and I'm gonna lift it above every name, because He's trying to tell you greater than all. Yes, the sir. devil don't have nothing else. Boy, you know what they said. I seen this boy one time say, King Kong don't have nothing on me. But that was a man. Yes, sir. But the devil don't have nothing on Jesus. Yes, he sir. tried. When, when the Lord baptized Jesus, John baptized Jesus in the Spirit, descended upon him. Don't you know the first thing he did? That the Holy Spirit drove him into the will. Yes, sir. To be tempted of the devil. Yes, you understand what I'm saying? He, well, he didn't do that to see if Jesus would fail. He did that because he wanted the devil to know where he put him in his place. Yes, sir. 
Amen. See, that's what you're supposed to do when you wake up in the morning. Put the devil in his place. Yes, sir. The word. You don't even know who I am. Just put the devil in his place. Amen. Put the devil in his place. The word. With the word. The word and power. Guess what? Right there. Open up the Bible. You know what she told you? See, you can put him in his place because you know what's going to happen when you open up this book? He's going to get somewhere. Because you know you're going to figure out what's going much wrong. How you can get him. See, how you can best try and fight back. Amen. You understand? How you can protect yourself is in this word. How you can fight back is in this word. Yes, how you can best try and carry it along with you all day, every day. Because it said, I will put my word on your heart. And we read that back there in, in Psalms. Didn't we read that? See, that's because the word will connect no matter what you do with it. See this right here? I can mess around and go to Genesis, and I guarantee somewhere in John, it's going to mess around and let you know exactly what God is talking about. Yes, you sir. You understand? Man, this word is powerful, man. Amen, brother. The word is powerful, man. I'll tell you something. Now, look, I'm, I'm going to just give you a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? See, we're going to stop right there because you know what? If you if you out there don't know Lord, the Lord, if you don't know what the word is, you go over there to John, the first chapter, the first word, you start reading, and God going to reveal it. You know, it's like I have to say, who is meant for, that's who is going to see. Look right here. Let's skip over to, to, to the 14th verse. It says, and the word was made flesh. Right, you see what I'm saying? See? That, that's, that's what he's talking about. He's talking about Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. See, he's talking about Jesus Christ. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of as of the only begotten of the Father, yes, sir. full of grace and truth. Yes, sir. See what I mean? Grace and truth. Yes, one of you. I'll tell you something. You know, I'm going to tell you something. So I like that so much. Can I say something, Brother Mark? Yeah, come on, Pastor. I want to let them know. I want to look that word up. Some of them just want the grace, but they don't want the truth. Well, Pastor, I'm going to tell you right now, it's not going to work for them. Uh -oh. I want to let you know what grace is. So once I tell you what grace is, you understand that you can't just get grace. You understand? God's grace is usually defined as un undeserved favor. Hey, you understand? Lord. We don't even deserve it. That's how. Right. So, so I'm sorry, you can't just get grace. Because for number one, God says for number one, we don't even deserve grace. Amen. Mm -hmm. Remember when I told you I was a youth and I was living for the world? That's what he was talking about. I didn't deserve, I didn't deserve his favor. Amen. And I was living like that. When I was disliking people I didn't even know because they wore a certain color or lived in a certain area. You understand? Okay, I had uh, certain things that I wanted to need covered that I wanted to cover. You understand? So I didn't have God's grace. I was undeserving of it until I came into the reality of Jesus Christ. Let's finish the glory before. It said, grace cannot be earned. It is something that is freely given. Amen. We count on God's grace and the bridge he built in our relationship with him. You see what I'm saying? Amen. Grace builds a bridge <laughs> to the Lord. That's awesome. And you know how to get to him. That's right. No man comes to him except they come through me. Amen. The word. You got to go through the word to get to him. Yeah, Lord, well, I'm trying to tell you, man, this ain't nothing complicated about it. But see, when, I was, when I was living in the world, you, I thought that was the most complicated thing I had to breathe a little bit out. No wonder I would put it down. But uh, see, now what I learned is that I go and I ask. I call pastor all the time. Pastor, what is he trying to say right here? What, what did he mean by this? You know what I mean? Pastor, well, look, uh, is it this pastor say, well, you know what he's getting huh? This is what made me feel that way. So, well, brother, come on, let's go see what the words say. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When I'm thinking to myself, I could have did that on my own. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, I said, so he answered me with the answer that should have been answered on myself. How do I, what do I, how do I figure this out, Lord? You go to the word. That's what Pastor say. He don't go and bring his opinion in. You know what he told me? He said, oh, let's go see what the word say, brother. He'll say, does the word say that? I say, no, Pastor, doesn't say, well, okay, let's go see what it say. So, grace is a bridge he built in our relationship with him. Bible verses about grace abide, abound from the foundation of the Old Testament. We know that grace is a part of God's charity. You see, character. It's a part of it's a part of God's character. Yes, sir. You see what I'm saying? So just like the word, 
You know, the spirit, all that, that's another part of God's character is grace. You know what I'm saying? Ain't that something? Ain't that something? Okay. And the time, let me see, I'm going to finish this here. Let's see, God got it going for what? Okay, let's go to 1341, Romans 6. We'll read. We'll read Romans 6, 1341. We'll read Romans 6 chapter. We'll go to the 6th chapter of Romans. We're going to read verse 1 and 2. All right. Oh, God is good. Amen. Man, you ready to it? When I opened up this book and started reading, you understand, that was one of the best things that ever happened to me. And that's why I want to encourage my brothers and sisters that if you right now going through something in your life, you know what I'm saying, try Jesus, man. I mean, it ain't like he's going to wake up and because you got money problems or bill problems, he's going to let fun take care of your bill for you, whatever, because you're waiting too late. But don't blame me because God gets much probably just snap his fingers in anybody. But I don't know. I, I can't tell you what God would do for you. Amen. You understand? But try Jesus, man. Try him. Yeah, Ask him to come into your life. Repent. Yes. Turn away from what you're doing, man. See, this is what God is trying to tell you, man. This is what I'm trying to tell you myself because I read it. I don't get no glory. It's God's word. Amen. You can't get no glory out of God's word. Man, if a man were to, to, could get paid off God's word, he would be a millionaire. He would be a trillionaire if I had a trillion dollars. Like that. God, you can't get paid off something that don't belong to you. On, That's called God. stealing. You can't steal God's word and act like it's your word. My you understand? You know what God tell you, man? Don't do that, pastor. Don't do that, preacher. Don't do that, deacon. Don't take this word here and just try to make it your word. Don't do that. God. Yeah, don't do that. Excuse me, man. 1341. Okay. I'm sorry about that. I want to fix I'm not going to fix that. Thank you. Okay. We're going to read verse 1. And 2. Okay. Verse 1. And 2. Okay. Read verse one and 2 what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abide? Remember, grace is a bridge that gives us, that gets us to God, right? Yes, sir. It's a bridge that God has already built with the relationship, with our relationship, how we can get to Him, and how you get to Him. That bridge is called Jesus. Yes, sir. You understand? So God says, should we continue sinning? And say, what? What shall we say then? After, after we must finally got this grace that Jesus is our our personal Lord and Savior, and He became a bridge for us to get to the Father. Then what we do? Shall we continue sinning? Huh? Verse 2 say, God forbid. How shall we then that died in sin live any longer therein? Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Uh, if God had but run and built a bridge between you and sin, and, and, and see, now sin can't come across that bridge unless you allow it. Because Jesus ain't got nothing to do with no sin. Amen. The Father ain't got nothing to do with sin. Jesus is worried. He said his word to condemn sin. You understand what I'm saying? So if he sent his word to condemn sin, how can you live in it any longer? I ain't living in it no See what I'm trying to tell you? I mean, that's right there going the word. What did the word say? God say with you, with who he that lives. I don't want to get it wrong. I don't want to add nothing to it. He say, Okay. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? Huh? Oh no. They say that grace may abide. That means may Jesus abide or keep continuing to abide in your life. Huh? Because he's a bridge. Amen. So should you continue to sin? No. All right then. Okay. Know ye not, the third verse, know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Christ. Jesus was baptized into his death. You see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I thank you, Lord. Thank you for going and hanging on the cross yes. for my sins, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to you, Lord. Lord. For you are so merciful, so kind, Lord. Lord. We yes. thank you for your word, Lord. Lord. We thank you for allowing to be a bridge to the Father, Lord. Lord. Something that the devil can't cross unless we allow, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord. You understand? Because you gave us reason to decide right or wrong, Lord. Lord. So if we choose the right thing to do, there's yes. no way in the world that the devil would be able to cross that bridge. You understand? Stay with Jesus, man. Amen. Stay with Jesus, man. He will repel that devil at all times, man. We want to mess around and do. We want to close with this scripture right here. 
We're going to go to 1413. Let's close with this hymn. You know what I'm saying? We're going to close. And we're going to mess around and be happy that we got to eat that buffet like that. Lord, you know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody can cook better than Jesus. You know what I'm saying, Pastor? Ain't bad, Ain't brother. nobody can cook better than Jesus. And you know what he's going to do? He's going to mess around and give you the food that the, your soul and your spirit and your, and your flesh deserve. You know what I'm saying? Let's go. Let me read this one scripture right here. Okay. Okay. 14. First Timothy. Okay. First Timothy. Six chapter. I mean, first just first Timothy six. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Verse six. From which from from which say heaven sway have turned aside unto vain Daniel. And Daniel, see that's that's the word. That's the way you talk. See, see when you start talking like that, and you start just Daniel just, just saying stuff that you see that's what God talking about right there. Amen. That's Amen. what those that's what those words. It says desire desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither why they say nor whereof they affirm. What does it say? But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. That's how. See what I'm saying? Knowing this, that the law is made, is not made for the righteous man. You see what I'm saying? But for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly, and for sinners, and un unholy, and profane, from murderers and for murderers of fathers and murderers of I mothers, God. for manslayers, for homemongers, for them that dwell themselves, defile, that defile themselves with mankind, <laughs> for men stealers, for liars, for I God. Uh, uh, prejudged persons, for and if they be any other thing that is contrary to, to sound doctrine. I got you know it. Yes, sir. That's what you talk about, about sound doctrine. It's sound doctrine. Anything that sets itself up against God, against the Word of God. Amen. This brother. right here is sound doctrine. I don't wonder if you're there, but see, that day I was listening to the pastor, and I was saying to myself, I said, Pastor, and then I thought about it, I said to myself, I said, doctrine. That's, that's the Word of God. Amen. And I'm, so we talking about yes, sir. That power yes, sir. in the Word. And see, right here, God is trying to tell you. He even gave you some examples of things that you ain't supposed to do. You understand? That's right, brother. So that's so. Listen to what I say. My God. This is the sound doctrine. Hey, bad brother. This is to the word of God. I like the sound doctrine. God tell you, don't do this and don't do that. I'm not telling you to do it. Now I tell you what, what God say. God say that He is grace is a bridge, and that if you do it in any of these things right here that's written in this sound doctrine. The sound doctrine. Yeah. That's no way in the world you get to go. My Thank you, God, my God, Thank my you. God, my God. What a word! Power! The power in the world. 